Hello, hello everyone. It's Amy Armstrong here again with you today. I am sitting down with Susan Birch. Susan is a practitioner with over 30 years experience in the health field and a wealth of knowledge. Susan is going to share her, uh, her story today so far as using the RCP or finding the RCP, uh, her, her own experience with it, and also what she, how she's managed to, to integrate that into her existing practice. Hi, Susan. Hey, Amy. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you today. You're a, a wealth of, of knowledge. Tell us a little bit before we start talking about your, your personal experience with the protocol. Tell us a, a little bit about your, uh, your, your background in the health uh, space. Well, I've been in the space for, yeah, probably 30, but over 30 years now. I have a master's in health sciences and I went down the exercise physiology musculoskeletal medicine, musculoskeletal rehabilitation and nutrition area. So I did I did a whole lot of postgraduate sort of training in those areas. And then I just found that I felt that my training was a bit limited. You know, at university you learn a lot, but you know, there's a big wide world out there that you need to sort of open your eyes to. And I was a bit I was a bit concerned about some of the gaps in my nutrition knowledge. So I went and, you know, did a lot more further training and ended up doing, um, in 2017, did Chris Cress's um, first course in um, functional medicine, which was really good and gave me a whole lot of new skills that I could use. And from that, I went on and did more training in um in biochemistry, but in um, you know, think blood chemistry analysis, and yeah, and eventually, I eventually all that led me to the RCPC. Or the yeah. RCPC. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about uh, how how you came across the RCP. Well, with Chris's training, we did do a lot around inflammation, the role of iron in the body and having excess iron. And I found the RCP because I was seeing over COVID, so many doctors were prescribing iron to their post-COVID patients. And I was quite concerned. There were I was quite concerned on the basis that they were prescribing it. And I had said to one of the one of my clients whose doctor had prescribed your iron, who I got on well with, and I just said, Oh, look, I'm I'm not entirely convinced that that iron deficiency is your problem or that you have iron deficiency anemia. And I said, I just don't think that he's tested properly and and I think he's just making some assumptions so she passed that on to her GP and I had a rather irate message from him saying where's your evidence you know don't undermine me kind of thing and I thought okay well I better go and I better go out there and find my evidence and so while I was you know doing that I came across Morley and I'm like oh well this is fascinating this is really good and I'm usually um, a quick adopter of new ideas I suppose so I thought well I better get in and do the training and dive headfirst into what he had to say which was um, fantastic. Yeah and so did you do some experimentation on yourself with the RCP and uh, and what did you notice for your own health? Um, I've always had pretty robust health I've always had pretty good health um, but I did incorporate the adrenal cocktails, which I thought were really good. What I loved about the RCP, which really fitted with my kind of um, philosophy, is the food first basis, right? So um, I love that I wasn't taking this ascorbic acid vitamin C out of a bottle. I love that I was using real vitamin C. I... I've always been interested in nutrients and and part of the protocol that I use with my clients has been a real nutrient 
nutrient first process and balancing you know our nutrient intake with our energy intake because I feel that we focus so much on the calories we bring in but we don't always think about the quality of those calories mm. so I found yeah so I found the um introducing the you know the adrenal cocktails was was really good and I really liked it I love the nice slow progression I like not a huge emphasis on over supplementing. Um, I I had been taking magnesium, so you know I kept up with that, and I did add in some copper, which I think went really well. Until you know, and then I think now I've probably restored my copper balance, perhaps, and so I don't need I don't need it, or I don't need as much, and. So many things resonated with me. I have I went grey really young in life, so I was in my twenties, and we know that that's my copper deficiency now. And I have this really astronomically high cholesterol, which gets tied back to copper as well. So you know there were a lot of things that were ringing bells for me personally. Mm, mm. And you spoke off camera of uh, really finding that ancestral way of eating you know, back in the early 90s when it wasn't kind of in vogue and that's certainly a big component of of the RCP. A lot of people initially just think it's, you know, taking all of these supplements, whereas really um, it incorporates a lot of of lifestyle and, and dietary changes too. And one of those is, you know, eating in in an ancestral way. So you, you've been on board with that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I have. And but, you know, the reminder is always good. And, you know, I don't, I, I know we're going to talk about, you know, work with clients shortly, but I think, you know, I love the the science and, and all the background into the nutrients of the RCP. But one of the things that I felt was really beneficial for me personally and as a practitioner was that relationship between stress and your mineral balance and you know not just our emotional stress but our physical stress so for me you know just cleaning up my act with my sleeping and my you know internet exposure and making sure I'm getting you know reminding myself that I need to get out there and get that morning light in my eyes all those things that you do and you drop off and you do again and you drop off but it was just a, a fantastic reminder you know personally that that you know, I need to be walking my talk. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, did, did the RCP uh, really bring the, the importance of that, that stress component and that picture of stress for people into, you know, into the, the spotlight for you um, as far as your own practice? Yeah, that's, I would say, you know, I love, like I said, I love the science behind the nutrient part of it. And, you know, I certainly learned a whole lot there that built on those building blocks. But that stress component, I think, is going to be a game changer for me and for my practice. I can remember one of the first clients when I used the Ferris wheel. And it was a young man that I'd been working with for a while. And, and you know, we'd been looking at his labs and doing all the stuff and talking about his supplements. And I said, oh, I'd like to just go through. I'd just like to go through this with you. And so we went through this stuff. And he was like, you know, he was great, really appreciative. But as we ended the call, I heard him say to someone else who was standing there, that was friggin' awesome. So... I think I think for him that just really made that connection. Um, and I want every client I have to hang up going, <laughs> that was friggin' awesome. Mm. Yeah, making making that connection is yeah. um yeah. yeah, you know, it can be a, a really big roadblock for some people in their healing yeah. when they haven't made those connections. And um I think working with clients as well, I think I've definitely had some that have just had that light bulb moment, um, that realization mm -hmm. that that picture of stress, you know, their their mosaic of, of stress throughout their lives has created the conditions in their body for them to be experiencing what they are now. And so just for the listeners who don't really know 
um, what you mean when you're talking about a Ferris wheel. What is it that, that you're referring to there? Well, I'm um, part of the the spreadsheet that as as practitioners we get to use. We have a we have a stress Ferris wheel, which and so we can fill in all the different stress elements, and they all kind of go back to this mineral dysregulation. So then we can get clients to actually identify what's been going on in their lives, and you know the real fascinating thing is you know it goes back to you know your prenatal you know environment mm. and the amount of um mineral accessibility you had then and the stress that your mum and you know your mum was under so I I find that really interesting because linking that to the mitochondria so I'm you know I you know the mitochondria is receiving a lot of um talking about at the moment but I've been really interested in mitochondria function for a long time and how do we get our mitochondria to function better because that's where we make energy that's where we clear exhaust and that's what enables our cells to do the jobs that they are designed to do and if our mitochondria aren't functioning properly our cells can't do their job, then we get symptoms. So every time we have a symptom of something, it goes back to some deficit or problem in the mitochondria. And so we can take the science of minerals and biochemistry, but then we can also take like the mind sciences. We can take the neurological sciences. We can take the energy sciences where fear and stress mm. and all those things also impact on that mitochondrial function. And then light, you know, as, as more um, research has been done, the effect of light and sunlight and being outside and the effect that has on our mitochondria. So I don't want to get too complicated in what I'm sort of talking about here. For me, it was just so exciting to bring, be able to bring all that stuff together. Yeah, all those pieces together. Yeah. And, you know, in, in truth and fairness, as a practitioner, it's really easy to get really bogged down in what supplement am I going to give them? What diet am I going to recommend? Because it's quite challenging to deal with that other stuff and it's quite confronting to deal with that other stuff and ask people about that stuff. And we live in this world where tough enough and just get on with life and um so yeah for me I just I really loved I really loved that aspect of it and that how we could bring that all back to you know all this new information that's coming out every day about how our body is working mm. and I see really our role you know in that mental and, and emotional and kind of spiritual healing space is to bring it to the forefront for the for our clients yeah, to, to yeah. let them know it's such a huge part of of you know where they're at with their health but then also to start to suggest some other modalities that they might That's like to try to, yeah. to to help yeah. release um you know release those emotions and get rid of those blocks because that's yeah certainly not in my wheelhouse but um you know we can definitely guide them in the right direction there too and that's where I think it's so good to work holistically as a practitioner and to have you know a network of other practitioners where you can say hey look I can read your blood chemistry really well <laughs> I'm good at this I've been doing this for like 15 years um, I can tell you a lot about you, the nutrients and things that you need from reading your blood chemistry but then here's this other person who's really experienced at helping draw out yeah like you were saying that emotional you know kind of spiritual aspect and helping you get on top of that because mm. until we do you know our mind and our body have to be connected and and as long as we're keeping them separate and not connecting them we can make gains and things yeah. but no, it's not really it's not really that full vibrant health that we're all seeking absolutely yeah and so tell us about, um, you know, how, you, how you've managed to 
integrate the RCP into your existing practice? What are you, what are you seeing with your clients? Um, what can you share with us there? I just talk to them about it. So I just, um, you know, they know that I'm on a lifelong learning experience. They know that I come back to them and I go, okay, I've changed my mind about that. I've learned something new. They're used to me doing that. Um, so I just share it with them. I just say, hey, you know, here's, here's some new information I've been learning. This is a new process. Um, here's some information. Here's some uh, Here's some videos you can watch. Here's, here's the handbook. And then, you know, people often are overwhelmed. They don't have time for that stuff. So I I break it down and you know, in, in, a, in an email. I'm like, okay, well, this is just, this is where we're going to start right now. Um, and, yeah, I think they find it a refreshing change. I think. You know, my clients trust me because, you know, they've been my clients for a long time. So they do trust me. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to integrating it more and more. And as new clients come on, of course, it'll just be an automatic part of of the onboarding process. We'll mm. be, mm. be implementing it. Yeah. So tell us about your experience um, going through the institute, and you know, obviously, you've done a lot of learning in your in your previous years. Uh, you know, how did this course stack up, and and what were your big take homes? What did you enjoy? Well, aspects of it were frustrating. So you know, for anyone listening, wanting to do the training who's a practitioner and has been like me and spent their whole life, you know, doing trainings all the time. Um, part of it was frustrating and, you know, they kept saying it'll make sense at the end, it'll make sense at the end. <laughs> this makes sense. <laughs> but it does actually, it does actually come together at the end. So I think that's the first thing to remember. Um, I do tend to go off down rabbit holes. So I'll take something and go off on these like little tangents for weeks on end. <laughs> and, and there's probably many of us out there who have done the training that, of that nature that do that. I think the support structure behind the training is absolutely amazing. I all the way through, I recognized how much work had gone into setting it up. And I recognized that there were continual upgrades and improvements. There's a fantastic support staff behind the scenes. Um, you know, having that ability to communicate and talk to other people doing the training was really powerful. Uh, I give a big heads up to Jackie, who was my tutor. Um, she was she was actually amazing, but I have been watching some of the replays of the other um, other sessions, and every tutor brings a slightly different perspective. Mm. And every time I learn something, every time I watch a new video, I learn something new, and this and it helps me to clarify um a bit better I feel like I've still got so much to learn um, but <laughs> was it like was there an element of, of of unlearning for you given given your background or were you you know was was the course really um just adding another layer to what you already knew I think, I think some practitioners realize, really find yeah. that there's a lot of unlearning and you know beliefs yeah. that they have to deal with um first I felt that it really added another layer. So with um, you know, with the training I'd done with Chris, it was it was good. It was a year's training. Um, we covered a lot of subjects, but we didn't really get into the depth with some of the mineral stuff. And so I was really, really excited to get into that. Um probably some unlearning to do but I just think if you do these things with an open mind and you know I think you know you, you used the word curiosity earlier um, if we do things with an open mind and curiosity and look at how they all connect together mm. um, 
that takes away that stress of unlearning because it's just a building block and you're just building on something else that um you know that you know so I didn't find the unlearning bit stressful I was really pleased to get more insights into things that I had been touched on and I had a sort of overview of but didn't really have any real in-depth um knowledge to the you know I feel like my knowledge about that's a lot better now and I'm going to continue learning about those things yeah so what would you say to to other practitioners who were you know on the fence um about about taking the training I would say be prepared to, to commit to some um, significant amount of time. I would say be prepared to to commit to some complex information, but just go for it. Like just just get out there and do it and give it a go. And um, I'm going to come back and do it again. I, I told you I'm going to come back and do it again in February. Um, and I know, you know, I have all the resources and I can go through it all again on my own, but I think it's really powerful. I think I probably missed more than I learned. And I think the second time through is going to be really amazing. So I would highly encourage practitioners to get out there and have a go. And it's fantastic to have a network of people with a similar focus and with a similar outlook and it and and it surprises me because you know I, I have a podcast that I put you know and I and I post things on social media and it amazes me how many people pop up when I'm like oh yeah they've done you know they know about the RCP or they've done the RCP so it's you can tell by the language they use and, and yeah. the comments so I just yeah. find one really big clue that people have, um, you know, know something about the root cause protocol is when they use the word ceruloplasmin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. With yeah. an understanding of what it actually is, I think, oh, yeah, you, you're on to more. Well, yeah. You know, it's, it's really interesting because ceruloplasmin has been on my list of blood tests for a long time, you know, along with copper and zinc and, you know, all these other, all these other testing. But now I look at it with a, with different eyes. Yeah, you know? it's a different lens, isn't it? Yeah, mm. it is. It's really, it's a real different lens. And yeah, it's it's exciting. Yeah. And um, like you said, the just for the listeners, there's, you know, all the information that you um, view during the course that is available for you to go back um, and watch and listen as and read as many times as you need to, to kind of integrate that information. But like you said, um, and I, I myself have done the course three times now and should probably <laughs> be joining you in class 17 mm. is that, you know, going through the live training, um, I mean, it's dynamic, right? So it the is, information yeah. is always changing. There's, you know, things being added as Molly's researching and, and he's bringing those things into the course in, in real time. But it just makes you set aside that time to show up to the lives and to do the readings. Um, and so if you're not quite as disciplined as um, as some, like myself, you know, it, it really does just afford yeah. you the time to to um yeah to go through well, it all well I mean I found it interesting I can't comment on how many people turned up to you know the the live classes with Morley each week but I know in our tutorial group I don't think anybody ever wanted to miss a class you know people would do classes while they were driving while they were on holiday um, because nobody wanted to miss out so I think that goes a long way to saying about the quality of not only the information but the community and the ability of the tutors to um, really bring people together and connect and and yeah it's a very special group yeah and I guess from that community aspect too you know um, it's an ever-growing community of, you know, really like-minded uh, people and practitioners and just such a wealth of knowledge and so many like yourself now coming into the fold who, 
you know, are already in the, in the health field um, in various capacities and just, you know, what those people are able to bring to our community. And, of course, just your mums and your dads and the people who are there talking about their own experience with the protocol and how it's helped them and that's what's got them interested in the training, people who have no health background whatsoever. And, and I've talked to mechanics and hairdressers and all sorts of people in this interview who you know, found the protocol for themselves and um, sure, saw huge, um, you know, huge healing within themselves. And, and, and that's why they're there doing the course, because they now just want to, to be able to help others. So there really is, you know, some appeal to all levels. Yeah, it, it, it really does. And I do take my, my head off to the people who come in who haven't had any background, um, and their ability to um, sort of assimilate the information and grasp it. And, you know, what you said earlier about um, unlearning, you know, maybe those, maybe for those people, it, there's an element of it being easier because they don't come with preconceptions. Mm, I think that's, I think that's um, definitely the case for some. Yeah. And I think, you know, hats off to the people who do come into the course for a lot of them, you know, they've spent years, if not decades, trying to heal themselves. So, um, you know, like your uh, title there, the health detective, they're their own, they're health detectives. And I yeah. think, yeah. you know, a lot of people come in with a huge knowledge base just just from their own research in, in trying to get well. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing um, your experience. It's always nice to have um, practitioners like yourself on. Um, I think that, you know, people like to hear from practitioners who are already in the field and, and know that really, you know, the protocol can just add another element, another feather in your cap um, yep. to be able to help your clients. So I think that's really valuable for people to hear about your experience. Yeah, well, it just gives you... Yeah, like you say, another another tool in the toolbox um, and another way of looking at the world. So, yeah, yeah well, thank you very much. It's yeah. been great right, having you. Thank you, you. Mm. Thank and, you Susan. Yeah, thank good you. luck to anyone out there who's done the course or is looking forward to doing the course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so just for those listening, um, February we have another intake class seventeen, I think. Um, <laughs> getting up there now, class seventeen, uh, beginning in February. So, um, I will link some details in the uh, video notes there for people who want to explore, um, you know, the the root cause um, institute and and what that has to offer. So, thank you, Susan. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you.